Hello everyone, today in this video we are discussing the first module of IoT super important question and in this video I have taken the question from the previous paper and if you have any questions you can DM on Instagram here and if you want this PDF also and uh, before starting please do like and subscribe it will make more videos like this so without wasting more time let's get started the first question is define IoT and mention its characteristics okay. so since we are uh, learning about IoT the first uh, important question would be to define IoT okay so what is IoT the full form is internet of things okay the first one network of physical objects or things that are embedded with sensors software and other technologies to connect and exchange data with other devices or systems over the internet so there would be many devices and things which will be connected interconnected via internet and they will be sharing the information okay these things can be anything it can be like everyday objects like smartwatches or industrial machines or even small or large systems like smart cities and connected vehicles so few characteristics are there for iot there are five characteristics the first one is dynamic and self-adapting dynamic means it is keep on changing whenever it is having any requirement to change it will change okay so that is dynamic and self-adapting means whenever the change is required it will adapt itself to the requirement okay so an example could be camera switching from low resolution to high resolution mode suppose that there is a camera here and there is an object here the camera is focusing on the object but as the uh, object goes far the camera's resolution should be capable of switching to that level right that is called as uh, self-adapting so the first thing is whatever is there in iot is all dynamic and self-adapting second is self-configuring we need not worry about the configuration part iot does the self-configuration it has a system group in that okay and third one is interoperable communication protocols there are many protocols that help to communicate with the other devices next one is unique identity each iot device in world many iot devices are there so each iot device has the uh, unique identity which can help us to track monitor and configure them remotely without going to that location last one is integrated into information network all the iot devices generate some information and all that information is stored in one place and each of these IoT devices has access to that information. So it is a collective intelligence to all individual devices. Okay, so these are the five characteristics of IoT. Next is what are the different protocols in the physical design of IoT? Protocols means rules. Okay, so let's understand what is the physical design of IoT. There are four layers in the physical design and it has a couple of protocols in it. So in each layer, there are few protocols or rules which are to be followed while sending the data. Let's discuss the first layer which is link layer. Link layer is the bare minimum or the foundational layer okay which is nothing but to send the data the wires are used okay so link layer pro protocols determine how the data is sent over physical wires like copper wire coaxial cable or radio wave okay and there are protocols which is 802.3 ethernet and 802.11 wi-fi so these are different varying in the speeds and uh, varying in the efficiency okay and the area which is covered is more here and uh, there are other ones also like in the mobile we use right 2g 3g 4g mobile communication those are all the protocols for the link layer on the top of link layer we have the network layer or internet layer it is responsible for sending ip ip means internet protocol datagrams over the internet and two protocols are used you might have heard a lot previously also ipv4 and ipv6 okay so ipv4 is a 32-bit address scheme it allows total of 2 power 32 addresses but in 2011 these were exhausted so ipv6 was made okay so ipv6 has total of 128 bit address that means 2 power 128 addresses can be utilized okay that's a, a very huge number after that we have the transport layer transport layer provides end-to-end -end message transfer capability independent of the underlying network no matter what the network is the transport layer will ensure that the data is transferred okay there are two main protocols in it based on our requirement one is tcp another one is udp tcp is transmission control protocol it is a connection oriented and stateful protocol it is more secure and it ensures reliable transfer of packets it also provides error detection capability suppose that during the sending of the packet it, it encountered an error and the data was changed tcp protocol will ensure that it is caught and not gone with the error okay and udp is user datagram protocol this is a faster protocol it is not secure it does not guarantee in the delivery okay it is just used for sending the data fast and mostly used when you want to send some non-confidential data okay confidential important data we use tcp okay last one is application layer this is the top layer okay it defines how application interface layers with the lower layer to send the data over the network okay port numbers are used for application addressing few of the protocols in this layer are first one is http the whole internet runs on http and we have few calls such as get post fetch and delete trace it follows our request response cycle 
Next one is core app, which is constrained application protocol. It is an application protocol for machines to communicate with each other. WebSocket protocol allows full duplex communication over WebSocket. It is based on TCP. Last one is MQTT, which is message queue telemetry transport. It is a lightweight messaging protocol based on publish subscribe model. Okay, publish subscribe means suppose this is the source, it publishes some data, and subscribe means whoever has subscribed to it will be receiving the data. Okay, that is called as publish subscribe model. Okay. Next question is what is logical design of IT? Right now we discussed physical design, right? Logical design, just the definition is enough. Logical design refers to the high level overview of the functionality without going into the technical specifications. Okay. Next one is explain the functional blocks of IoT with a neat diagram. So IoT is IoT consists of a lot of blocks. What are those blocks we'll be discussing? And each block has a function. Okay. So IoT system comprises of a number of functional blocks that provide the system the capabilities for identification, sensing, actuation, configuration, and management. Okay, these functional blocks are described as follows. First one is device. IoT system comprises of devices that provide sensing, actuation, monitoring, and control functions. Next one is communication. Communication handles the communication for IoT system. Okay. And services, IoT uses various types of IoT services such as IoT for device monitoring device control services, data publishing services, and service for data discovery. Okay, those are all the services provided. Next one is management. Management functions block provides various functions to govern the IoT system, to manage the resources, and to manage the how the communication is happening. Security functions block, as the name suggests, it provides the authorization, authentication, and content integrity, and data security. Last one is application. It is an interface that the users can use to control and monitor various aspects of IoT systems. So the diagram is as follows. First, you have to write the application here, followed by two parts. You will go. First one is here management, second one is uh, here, which is security. In between, we have services and communication, and the last we have the device. Okay, so these are the functional blocks of IoT. Next one is explain the different IoT communication models with diagrams. So there are four IoT communication models. Okay, the first one is request response. We'll send a request, we'll get back a response. Second is publish subscribe. We'll be publishing some data and whoever has subscribed will be receiving the data. Okay. Push pull mechanism is also another one and exclusive pair is another one. Okay, so four types are there. Let's discuss each with a diagram. Request response, it is a model where the client sends a request. Okay, who sends the request? Client sends a request to the server and server fetches the answer and sends back to the client. Okay, so see here, client sends request to the server. So request has gone from here and it includes all the things which are required for the uh, server and it will fetch the uh, solution from the resources, whatever is the data which is required. It will send back to the server and from the server, the response will be sent back to the client. This is the request response communication model. Second one is publish subscribe. Publishers are the source of data. They send the data to the topic. Okay, so where it is all published to the topic. Okay, from there it is taken and there only it is published. Okay, consumers consume the data from the publisher and the whole thing is managed by brokers. Okay, so this is a publisher. It has a message. It will send the message to one topic and another message to another topic and whichever has subscribed to that particular topic will be receiving that data. Okay, so there are consumers at the uh, right hand side. Next one is push pull. It is a model where the data is pushed to the message queue and pulled from there. Okay, so there will be a queue in between. Publisher will push the data and the consumer will consume the data. Means pull the data. Okay. Last one is exclusive pair. It is a bi directional fully duplex communication model that uses persistent connection between client and server. Okay. So client is there and server is there. Bi directional is there. Both the ways you can send the data and receive the data. And it is fully duplex, means at a single point of time, you can also send and receive the data. So that is the exclusive pair model, communication model. The next one is explaining detail risk based communication APIs. Risk means representational state transfer. Okay. It is based on communication APIs following the request response cycle. Okay. So there will be a client and server both independent of each other. It is stateless as in all information needed by the server is provided by the client and server cannot assume the uh, information on its own. Okay. And it should specify the data is cacheable or not, whether it can be reused or not. That is that should also be specified. So here is a diagram, the request is sent and the response is taken back, request is sent and the response is taken back here. Okay, so it works in this way. It has a layered approach. Each component cannot see beyond the immediate layer. So it is hidden, abstracted. Okay. The method of communication between client servers is uniform. Servers can provide executable code to the client at demand. Okay. So these are the few of the uh, calls which are get method, post method, and what it does here. All those things are written. You can remember few of them. Okay.
the next question is explain with the various iot enabling technologies okay so iot is enabled by various technologies means what are technologies are used in uh, iot okay the first one is wireless sensor networks okay it comprises of distributed devices with the sensors which are used to monitor environmental physical conditions means if an iot device is in middle of forest okay it will have sensors to detect many things which it requires for its security okay so that is called as wireless sensor network there will be a lot of sensors it consists of end to end nodes and routers for transferring data packets coordinator collects the data from all the nodes and sends Examples are weather monitoring system, indoor air quality monitoring system, and soil moisture monitoring system. If a sensor is there in soil, it will sense how much moisture is there. Okay. Next one is cloud computing. Cloud computing is a transformative computing paradigm that involves delivering the applications and services over internet. So there are three types: IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service; PaaS, which is platform as a service; and SaaS, which is software as a service okay these three things are running in cloud and iot utilizes to send the data and store it in the cloud and to anal analyze the data and process the data we we require big data analytics okay big data is defined as a collection of data sets whose volume velocity or variety is so large and it, that it is difficult to manage via traditional db methods means the data is too huge we cannot process it using the existing uh, database methods some of the big data generated by iot are sensor data for weather monitoring and machine sensor data from embedded systems health and fitness data for, from variable fitness bands okay the underlying characteristics of big data include volume velocity and variety Next is communication protocols. There are protocols which define how the data should be and uh, how it is transferred over the internet. Okay, embedded system. These systems are designed to perform a specific task and are attached to the main device like washing machine. In washing machine, you cannot do other things other than washing the clothes, right? So that is a specific uh, task which it has inside uh, the system. IoT sensors are also embedded system. They are form an integral part of the main device. Next one is explain briefly the levels of IoT 1 to 6. Okay, so 6 levels of IoT are there. Each level has a different um, depth of information. Okay, so IoT level 1. In level 1 IoT, it has a single node or device which performs sensing and actuation. It stores data, performs analysis and hosts the application as shown below. The example is home automation system. It consists one single node that controls the light and appliances in a room. The info should be stored in a local DB. REST services are used for updating and retrieving the status of the light. There is a UI for handling all of this. Okay, so there is an application for handling the UI and it uses the REST or web socket services for transferring the data between them. Database stores the actual data. Control service is connected with resources and the device. IoT level 2. In level 2 also it has single nodes performing sensing or actuation that they, they, the difference is data is stored in cloud. So the example can be smart irrigation system. Single node that monitors the soil moisture and the controller service continuously monitors the moisture levels and moisture, once the moisture level drops, irrigation system is turned on. So there is an actuator also. If something happens, what should be the action? Okay, it is a trigger. What should be the action? Okay, so in the cloud we will be having the data stored and in the local part, we will be having the uh, sensors. Okay. In level 3, also it has a single load, but the data is stored as well as analyzed in the cloud. Okay. Previously, we were not analyzing the data. Now we are also analyzing. So, system for tracking package handling. The system monitors vibration levels for a package being shipped. Okay. And the device in this system uses gyroscope and accelerometer for monitoring vibration levels. Controller service sends the controller data to the cloud. Analysis happens on the cloud that can trigger alerts if the data is greater than the threshold. Means the data is damaged. Like that, okay, package handling. Handling means it should not be moving more, right? So that it detects and uh, tells to the, um, it triggers and tells to whoever is concerned about it, okay? Next one is IoT level 4. It has multiple nodes. Instead of single node, it has multiple nodes. It performs local analysis. Data is stored in cloud and is application based. It has published subscribe model. Okay. So, example can be noise monitoring. It consists of multiple nodes placed in different locations. It are in, those nodes are in front of each other. It runs its own controller service. Each node runs its own controller service. Cloud based applications are used for initializing the data. So, this is the diagram as you can see. In the cloud, we have the data which is stored. Multiple nodes are there, which is uh, handling the data means gathering data and sending to the cloud. Next level is IoT level 5. It has multiple nodes and one coordinator node. The coordinator nodes controls all the other nodes. The end nodes perform 
sensing or actuation. Sensing means checking if something is greater than or lesser than the required uh, threshold. Actuation means what should happen if it is greater or less than the required threshold. Coordinator node collects the data from the end nodes and sends to the cloud. Okay. System for forest fire detection. Multiple nodes are present in different locations for monitoring the humidity and carbon dioxide and temperature. Coordinator collects the data from the end nodes and provides the interacting uh, internet connecting to the IoT system. And data is stored in the cloud DB and analysis is performed there. Okay. So there are multiple nodes and analysis is also performed in the cloud. Okay. The last level is IoT level 6 system. It has multiple independent end nodes that collect the data and send to the cloud. Data is stored in cloud application and application is cloud based. Weather monitoring system is an example of it. It has multiple nodes placed in different locations for monitoring temperature, humidity and pressure in an area. They are equipped with various sensors for sensing the data and it, the data is stored in the cloud database. Analysis is done in the cloud to aggregate the data and make predictions. So this is the diagram of it. Okay. That's all for the module 1 and if you found this video helpful please do like and subscribe it helps make more like this and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.